be cooking there. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Happy Chuck here morning. with No Time To Be Sad in Tapanong, Thailand. Today, we are going to make croissants. Happy croissants. <laughs> For those of you that are not familiar with my channel, me and my wife moved here from America. We live here in Thailand and I'm making a video today on a recommendation for my viewers on how to make some delicious croissants. And with the same batch, the same recipe, I'm gonna make a flaky biscuit. Now in Thailand it's very hot, so this recipe need the ingredients have to be cold when preparing this mix. So that's what I want to show you today, like the blue collar, world's easiest. Forget all, you know, croissants are very difficult and time consuming to make. If you look on the internet, on YouTube, man, the technique is like, man, I don't have time for this crap. But I'm going to show you guys how to make a way better croissant than that. And really, we're just going to kind of throw it together, stick it in the refrigerator and, uh, and make magic. Let's go into the kitchen and make croissants and biscuits. You ready? I'm doing this by myself. Let's go. I'm trying to get set up here to start the video and she's bothering me about an apron. Yeah, so it's clean. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. So I know many of you guys have seen my Thai style kitchen before. This is it. Uh, this is all, all the ingredients I'm going to put in the description box of this video, but bread is pretty basic. Today we're going to use bread flour, one egg, yeast, a little bit of sugar, and a lot of sugar, and about a quarter cup of melted butter, and a cup of warm milk. Warm like 45 seconds in a microwave milk. We want to try, and a dash of salt. We want to try to get our yeast activated. This, what it does is just pretty much tells me the yeast is healthy and it's alive. A lot of people don't do this, but I do it. And I like the way it looks too. I'm gonna take a tablespoon of yeast, pour it in there now. Yeast likes sugar. So we're gonna feed it a little bit to speed up the, uh, the process, the activation process, give it a little stir. And I'm gonna just wait, I don't know, usually takes about three minutes or so. I don't know. I'm just going to set it aside. I made a little bit of mess. It's okay. I'm not a chef. I'm not a professional. So uh, I'm just going to show you the easiest way to make this. Make sure you store your open container of yeast back in the refrigerator so it lasts a long time. On the flour, the recipe usually takes about three, three and a half cups. I'm going to use cups. You guys can do the conversion to whatever you want, grams, milliliters, whatever you want, just ask Google. But we're gonna do cups of bread flour, about three, three and a half. It's all about what I said about the feel, the consistency of the bread and different types of recipe, different types of bread. Sometimes the dough needs to be really soft and tacky and some needs to be a little firm. So this is gonna be a little bit in the middle. <laughs> I'll show you when we get to that point. So I am gonna start mixing my wet ingredient. Okay, put our butter in. And I'm gonna put our sugar. And I'm gonna put a dash of salt. Salt always brings out the flavor and everything, you know? Okay, this is what activated yeast looks like. And it does smell like yeast. So this is all of our wet ingredients right there. So with this liquid, we, I don't know, it, it's kind of like making 
cement, I guess. It's got to have the perfect mixture. So we're just going to keep adding flour until we get that perfect, perfect texture. This is a, a quarter, quarter cup. I'm going to add one cup of flour. You know, you don't, like I said, you don't have to be like perfect on the measurements. You just got to have the basic ingredients. Really, you just need flour, you need yeast, and some kind of oil. If you want it soft and you want it to taste good, use butter and a little bit of sugar because, I don't know, sugar just makes things taste better. <laughs> I mean, if you're making Italian bread or pizza dough, you don't want to add any sugar to it. A mango bread? Mango bread, <laughs> no. You get so many. It's mango season right now. Everybody's bringing mangoes. Mango, mango. So if you make too much dough, you know, you could make two or three loaves of bread, biscuits, all kinds of extra stuff, you know? Mama. I'm gonna add another half a cup. I'm just getting this kind of ready to get on the mixer and start, start mixing my dough. Now you can do this by hand. You don't really need a mixer. I've got a little handheld mixer. It seems to work pretty good and easy for me, but when we were traveling in the travel trailer, I used to just do this by hand. I just start adding flour until it becomes not easy to mix with this, but you want to make sure that you mix it night. You want to mix it at least 15, 20 minutes to get the, uh, all the gluten out of the flour. So let's take it over here to the blender. I know I told you at the beginning of this video, that this recipe has to be cold in order to make the croissants or the biscuits, but it, everything right now making the bread has to be warm. We've got to make sure everything rises uh, and then the cold process begins. You do need maybe a couple of sticks of butter to be room temperature. So I put some butter in here and uh, by the time our dough is finished and rising, it'd be about, here in Thailand, it's pretty humid and, and hot, but uh, about 45 minutes we'll be ready to start the preparation for the croissants. Okay, so let's, uh, what I'm gonna do here is just basically blend this until it becomes the perfect texture that I want. And we're just gonna continue to add flour until I achieve that. Now, if you add too much flour, just put a little bit more liquid in there. It's not that much of a deal. You could add a little bit of milk or even a little bit of water. It doesn't take much liquid to get it back if you overdo it with the flour. But you know, just put a half a cup or a quarter cup at a time in this process. It's okay to do it slow because that way you have plenty of time to mix the flour and get the gluten out of the flour. I usually take something like this and just kind of help mix it all together. Okay, let me keep adding and I'll let you know how much I put in there. <laughs> Take that damn apron off. I'm sweating like I'm at a job or something. Yeah, selfies. <laughs> yeah, selfies. <laughs> I'm mixing bread. Okay, been mixing it for about 15 minutes now. I like the way it feels. It's not sticking to my hand, but it's nice and soft. So let's clean around the pot here. We're gonna need this pan. There's all kinds of bread recipes on the internet. You can use any one of them. Really, this is all about the technique on how to make the croissant. So you can use your bread recipe and this technique that I'm gonna show you as soon as this bread rises. And uh, yeah, the technique is really what I wanna show you. I know like a lot of men when they're cooking, if it's too difficult and too time consuming, forget about it. Oh, by the way, I ended up using just a little under three cups three cups of uh, flour. Now, depending on where you're at, uh, that's why I say with bread, it's very difficult to go exactly by the ingredients. You really just gotta go by the feel of, of, of it, you know, because if you overdo it, it's not gonna be soft. So, but 
the trick to keep this thing from drying out today since the main ingredients in this is butter i'm going to use melted butter but normally when i make bread i use like a, a little bit of olive oil i put it in the pan and roll the roll the ball into it so it doesn't uh it doesn't get dry but today i am going to use butter i just got it warm enough just to melt in the microwave so i'm going to just roll this in here coat it and that's it that's all i'm gonna do and then i'm gonna let it do its own thing in about 45 minutes i don't know if you guys still have bags available in your area you can use uh saran wrap i guess but just take a bag like a grocery bag and then we're just gonna put it over over the bowl so it doesn't dry out it ain't gonna really dry out with all this butter but this helps keep the moisture in and what it'll do is that dough when it starts to rise it actually it's becoming alive and it gets a little warm so in order to try to keep the heat in so it rises better we're going to put a bag on it and you can do two things here if if it's very cold in your house you could just kind of preheat your oven a little bit just obviously to warm it up not to like melt the plastic bag when you stick it in there not that i haven't done that before <laughs> Or, I like this technique a little bit better. Just stick it in the oven. And then if you have a, uh, here in Thailand, we like to, uh, we they always have a hot water dispenser. So if you have a hot water dispenser, just get some hot water and put it in a, in a coffee cup. The coffee cup will help keep it warm longer. And then we're just gonna set this like right underneath. And that'll keep the whole thing warm and the liquid hot and the hot water will keep it moist in there. So I'm gonna come back here in about 45 minutes and see how it looks. She's getting prepared for bread. <laughs> Let's go see if our bread is risen. Uh, it's been a little over 45 minutes. I've made bread back home in the States and sometimes it takes a couple hours for it to rise. Now making bread, you guys know, I should have, I don't think I have to mention this, but it takes a lot of patience to make bread. So if you try to rush this process, uh, it won't work. But um, you can make bread like on the weekend or something. You make enough bread to last all week, unless you got a lot of people in your house. So let's take a look at it. Look at that, huh? Nice and full. All right, let's unwrap this thing. Make sure you got your hands clean, of course, always. Look at that. I don't know why we gotta do that, right? <laughs> That's the thing about making bread. We gotta, we gotta touch it. Oh, hey. Okay, next step. Clean this counter surface really well. Okay, now I'm gonna get it out and then put it in some kind of some kind of shape to where I can divide this thing up. I want eight pieces. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be extremely perfect with this, but I want eight pieces. One, two, three, four. Two. Seven, eight pieces. Find your biggest piece, and we want to make, we want to roll this thing out into a, uh, into a ball, and then flatten it out. Okay, now I just want to roll this out into like a pancake, as best as I can. You know it's really good when it starts to go back and shrink up. You know that your uh, your bread is going to be nice and full. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's okay. 
So now I want to take my butter. My hands are super clean and I just want to take this. Now you can use a fork or you can use a butter knife or you don't have to do it the Neanderthalic way like me. But you know what? It's easier this way and it's fun. You want to help? <laughs> okay. Now that's done. I'm going to just move this over here out of the way. And I'm going to get my next piece. Every time I add butter, I have butter all over my fingers. It just adds it to the, to the dough. I'm, I don't really care if it looks perfect at this point. I just need to make it into a, some type of circle. And I don't really care about that. You will soon find out why. If you guys have ever watched croissant videos, man, it's such a pain in the butt. You gotta do all this, stick it in the refrigerator, get it cool again, fold it like 8,000 times. It's just, it's ridiculous, you know? And my technique, it works the same. So I wanna put that on top. I'm making my layers right now. I want eight layers. And you know, if you don't get it cut just right and you only have six, who cares? Six layers, it just doesn't matter. Okay, I've got seven layers just full of butter on that. And I'm gonna take my last, my last top layer with no butter on it, roll it out. and put it on top of that. Now I want to get some saran wrap. <laughs> easy, easy, this is easy. <laughs> okay, I have put some saran wrap on the table. Now I'm gonna transfer this onto <laughs> the saran wrap. It doesn't look pretty right now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about this at all. I'm telling you, this is gonna be super impressive when it's done. So now I want to put this in the freezer and make it hard, maybe about 30 minutes. This is what we got in Thailand, so. <laughs> no, well, that too. The type of saran wrap. Okay, now we put it in there. Okay, I'll be back. I think our uh, dough has gotten I said hard early, not like ice, like an ice cube, but needs to be firm. So I say about 30 minutes is good. Okay, then we're gonna remove it from the saran wrap. You can, depending on your surface, you can put some flour down so it doesn't stick. So now I'm gonna roll this out into a, uh, a big circle as thin as I could possibly get it. I have a bigger roller pin. I just like this one. If you don't believe me, here it is. If you're rolling it thin, there's gonna, sometimes you might get a little bit of the butter come out. It's okay, don't worry about it. Just keep rolling and keep rolling. Okay, that's it. How does that look? You can see the little bit of butter coming through. It's okay, it's nice and cool and not melting, so here's what I'm gonna do. Half of this is gonna be like biscuits and half of these are gonna be croissants. So I'm just going to cut little, I've gotta do this pretty quick, so I'm gonna do the croissants first. If it starts to get, 
warm and melty, that's going to be a problem. Let me see. Did I say melty? I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> I don't have like a little round cutter, so I'm gonna use this. So we're gonna have heart-shaped flaky biscuits. Is that okay? <laughs> I think it'll be okay, huh? It's gonna have to be okay. So this one here, this half, I'm going to fold it again and I'm going to cut a couple of donuts, a couple of donuts, <laughs> a couple of biscuits out of this one. So we're gonna try to take this piece and make another one, or maybe two. It won't be as perfect as the other ones, but it's okay. I don't know what to do with these, so here, you make a couple of those. <laughs> you can make any design you want to, okay? All right, so this is gonna be my croissant. Just a ball. <laughs> and we're gonna take this and spread this out a little bit and just roll it, roll it. Like that. Just like that. So it's pretty hot here, so we're having to do this fast. I'm kind of pulling at the same time when I'm folding it. Pretty well, this could be your job next time. I'll just make the dough. All right, now what we need to do is do an egg wash. You can do milk and an egg. I'm gonna do, with a little bit of water, I, I recommend using milk, but I'm just gonna use water and I'm gonna put some honey in there. I don't feel like opening a container of milk right now. <laughs> we don't have a, we don't have a, uh, cause I just need a little bit of milk. We have these, but the, the water's okay and the honey. We're gonna put it in the oven and let it rise for a little while. It's gonna take a little long. It won't rise too much cause it's cold. But we're gonna stick it in the oven, let's say about another 30 minutes. And then we're gonna do one more coat of this. And then we're gonna bake these bad boys. Of course, we're not gonna turn the oven on. I just want it to rise a little bit. So let's leave that in there for about 30 minutes and come back. All right, looks like it's getting nice and puffy. I'm gonna preheat my oven to about 170 degrees Celsius and cook it for about maybe 20 to 30 minutes. We're just gonna keep an eye on it. Okay, fresh out of the oven looks awesome so look at this this is a nice heart-shaped flaky look at that how flaky that is doesn't that look awesome 
and our nice crispy flaky croissant there you go and some melted butter Mmm, <laughs> and amazing. A little tiny bit of honey flavor is good. Mmm, awesome. Okay, this is for my Australian subscribers that I love so dearly. I got beat up so much last time I tried this because it tastes like it's bad, but they all said that I tasted it all wrong. So I've listened to about over a hundred comments. I'm gonna take, actually, I'm gonna get another one here. I'm gonna leave the prettiest one for Paige. This one's nice and warm. I'm gonna take just half of this flaky. Well, I hope this tastes better. <laughs> this bread is so good. So I was told to put a lot, a lot of butter. So is that enough butter? A lot of butter? If I put any more, it's gonna just come off of it. So I'm gonna take a little tiny bit. Is that a tiny, to me that's a tiny bit. Is that a tiny bit? I have durian in the fridge. And we're gonna put this tiny bit. I, this bread is so good, I hate to ruin it. So I'm just, I'm gonna have to eat it. I hope you guys are looking at it going, okay, Chuck, he's finally doing it right. But I have a feeling I'm not. <laughs> so there it is right there. I saw a commercial on TV about Vegemite and it didn't look like that. It was covered up and man, it was horrible. Okay. No. <laughs> she already tried it once. It's not too bad. You know what? It's a lot better with butter dripping down your fingers. <laughs> but I'm going to still give it a thumbs down. Sorry, guys. I tried. Anyway, if you liked today's video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to try making this bread, hit me up on my Facebook page and share some pictures. I'd love to see them. I hope it works out. Anybody who wants to come to this house, I have a full, look, it's full and it's got your name on it. Come get it. Anyway, hit the like, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good bread? Mm -hmm. Sure you don't want that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are knowing and not one. <laughs>